Good morning. Welcome to our time of worship this morning. And as we begin our time of worship together, some announcements for you all, uh, for us all together. Uh, we, uh, we will be on vacation June 14th to the 20th. Uh, we'll be camping. If you want to know where we are, look for the red spot on the weather radar where it's raining heaviest. We will be camping underneath that red spot. Um, pastoral emergencies, uh, there's some information uh, in the life. Uh, Jim Hill will be covering not only next Sunday, but he'll be here covering for emergencies. You can get in touch with uh, Bob Murphy, Mr. President, as I refer to him, and uh, or the church office Tuesday through third, th uh, Friday, excuse me, uh, church office, and they'll get things taken care of. Uh, continuing, continuing to ease our way uh, into uh, singing, uh, this Sunday there will be a couple of slides, words, there will be some hymns that we can uh, sing. Uh, if you're able, during this, the, the first Sunday we returned to singing, I forgot it had been so long, we didn't stand for singing. And so last Sunday I remembered, stand for singing, if you're able, uh, during those two hymns. Uh, and uh, the 4th of July watch party is a go. Uh, so we will be hosting that. Uh, check out the article in The Life for more details. I want to thank Marty for being here, filling in today. Uh, Paula and her sidekick are there. Paula will be playing the flute, not the dog. Uh, and also, 40 years ago today, uh, on a Saturday 40 years ago, my uh, wife, for some reason, said yes. So, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that's a decision she's been uh, contemplating. <laughs> I'll stop. Um, but God is good. The sun is shining. When it rains, God is still good. We have an opportunity this morning to gather together, to worship God together, to give God the thanks and the praise and the worship that he alone deserves. Let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. In the morning, when the sun rises, we shall praise you, O Lord. You have delivered us through every long night and given us safe passage across the rivers of struggle. The darkness is past, the light has come. Let us raise our song and prayer to you, O Lord, in joy. Please stand.
Please join me in the prayer of confession. Gracious God, we confess that we have longed too much for the comforts of this world. We have loved the gifts more than the giver. In your mercy, help us to see that all the things we pine for are shadows, but you are the substance, that they are quicksand, but you are mountain that they are shifting, but you are anchor. We plead your forgiveness on the merits of Jesus Christ. Accept his worthiness for our unworthiness, his sinlessness for our transgressions, his fullness for our emptiness, his glory for our shame, his righteousness for our dead works, his death for our life. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the good news. Romans 6, verse 23 says this, For the wages of sin is death, but... The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue in the book of James, and our scripture reading today is James chapter 5, verses 13 through 18. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Hear God's word as I share it with you all. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I have a question for you this morning as we're thinking about uh, what James has written. How's your prayer life? Some of you may, through this, through this time of challenge, may have experienced unchanged prayer life. In other words, prayer is something that you've always done. You continued through the time of the pandemic to pray. Uh, in fact, you may have actually prayed more through this time of uh, separation and pandemic than you did beforehand. And so that was good. So you might say that your prayer life is about the same as it's always been. You might say that your, your prayer life, you might agree that your prayer life has grown through these times. And then maybe prayer has been a struggle for you. And so we come across these verses in James' letter to his people. And remember, it's important to remember, James is writing to church people. He's writing to many different congregations, people like us who are part of a congregation. The culture is different, the language is different, and yet we are the same in that we are gathered together as God's people. That's his audience. Those are the individuals, and we've seen that all through this letter, those are the individuals to whom James is writing. And he says, pray. 
how do we live that individually and together as a congregation? What does it mean for us as a congregation to individually and together grow a vibrant prayer life? Because James says that the, the prayer of the righteous, the prayer of those who are redeemed, is effective. Do you believe that? The prayer changes things, that God listens to those who are praying. What gets in the way of that? Well, maybe it, it, it could be our experiences as people. Perhaps you are an individual, someone who has been praying for a certain thing for months, weeks, perhaps even years, and the situation has not changed. The worry is still there, and so you begin to wonder if God has heard your prayers. Or, or maybe, maybe your experience has been that you've prayed for one particular thing, for a very specific answer, and the answer was not that which you have prayed for. In fact, it may have even been the opposite. And so you wonder, does God hear my prayer? There seems to be an incongruency here, maybe, in our experience that that James says that the prayer of those who are redeemed is effective. And yet there are times when we wonder about that. But maybe, maybe the purpose of prayer is not to get what we want. Perhaps we, we struggle with prayer because prayer's not our first avenue. Maybe you've heard the phrase, well, we've done everything, now all we can do is pray. You know, it kind of reminds me that uh, we, we might tend to treat prayer as one of those little donut spare tires in cars, that we can pull it out and use it to get far enough along until we get to a place where we can get it fixed. Or perhaps we, we, we see a dichotomy between prayer and uh, seeing a physician. And maybe we, we trust that physician more than we trust, the physician that we can see, more than we trust the answer of prayer. And so we're called to prayerfully see a physician. Prayerfully seek the medications. You you may think of other reasons that have caused uh, caused you and me to doubt the the efficacy of prayer. What does James say? How, How do we turn the corner if that is our experience? How do we turn the corner into becoming people who resolutely pray, regardless of what we see going on around us? How do we build and strengthen our prayer life? Well, James, in these verses, gave us a couple of uh, directions on how we can build our prayer life, particularly in those times when we are struggling with the answers or what we perceive as no answer at all. And beginning in uh, verse uh, 15, 13, sorry. Is any of you in trouble? Is any of you suffering? Is any of you, the word is, is hardship in the original language. Is any of you experiencing hardship? Well, this past year, <laughs> we know what that, what that is. Uh, is any of you experiencing hardship? Let him pray. Is anyone happy or rejoicing? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil 
in the name of the Lord. When we think about prayer and the way James describes it here and, and, and how uh, the place it occupies in our life, the two things in these verses stand out when I read them to me, hopefully to you as well. The first is, is that we're always praying. That prayer is that background music in our lives. So we may not be on our knees praying, we may not be in church praying, but it is the background music as we think about our prayers and raise them up uh, to God. The other day we were uh, grocery shopping uh, and they had back that, that music, it wasn't music, it wasn't elevator music, uh, something more positive than that. But there was music playing, kind of lifted the shopping experience, I guess, was this design. But that is how prayer is in the background of our lives. Think of it as the background music that we hear, that we experience. And not simply in difficult times. Maybe we hold on to prayer as that spare tire as an emergency. And James is saying, no, we pray all the time. We pray in times of hardship and suffering, like this past year. We pray in times and give thanks to God when life is going very well. And we raise prayers of thanksgiving. Sing psalms, is what he literally says. And those are prayers. And so prayer is a whole life thing. Prayer is the background music in believers' lives. It is always going on to some extent. Perhaps as a, as, a, uh, uh, as a thought that passes through our minds as we think about God, perhaps that hymn that comes to mind that we find ourselves humming as we make our way through life and so on. Now the other thing about prayer not only is it the background music of a believer's life, it is something that is shared together. Now remember, as I said, James is writing to believers, to a congregation. And he is saying that uh, prayer is shared together in the life of a congregation. We'll talk more about that later. But prayer is shared together. There's, it is something that, that lives not only in the background music of the individual's life, but also think of it as the background music, the emphasis in the life of a gathered congregation together. And so those two things we immediately see James talking about here. It is something that goes on in times when we have hardship, in times when we celebrate, it is something that is shared together in the life of a congregation. So then, if those two things are true, if that's what James is saying, how then do you and I put that into practice in our lives? What does it mean for us, as the redeemed people of God, to live prayer in our lives? Well, let's think about that for a minute. Let me look at verse 15. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. The prayer offered in faith. What does that mean? Well, we have, the, there's a heresy out there, by the way, something that is not Christian, something that is not in the scriptures, that says it's commonly called uh, the, the health and wealth gospels. Name it and claim it. And, and what that heresy says is that if you did not get the answer that you wanted from God, you did not have enough faith. That's a tragic heresy. It blames the person 
who is uh, praying. It, it makes God out to be a, a, a cosmic genie that we have to rub the right way to get the answer that we want, and God is supposed to give us what we want if we pray correctly and have enough faith makes him a genie rather than the sovereign, loving, redeeming God of the universe. What does it mean then when he says the prayer of faith? The prayer of faith knows, first, uh, we understand that God hears our prayers. That's the first step of faith. It is not about getting what we want from God. It is about bringing our hearts, our joys, our concerns into God's presence and lifting those joys and concerns and worries and rejoicings to God. And so the prayer of faith says that I have prayed about this and God has heard my prayer. And God will answer the prayer that I have presented to him and raised to him, passionately perhaps, even with tears or with joy, that God has heard it. And God loves us too much to not give us the best answer to those prayers according to his will and purpose for us. Jesus told parables about that prayer. And so the one praying says, I have lifted this request to God. He has heard it. And the one praying in faith says, Lord, may I have eyes to see your answers to this prayer. Let me see your answers. Because the point of prayer is not to get what we want, although God often does that, but to pray according to his will and purpose and kingdom. Remember how Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. Nevertheless, not what I want, but your will be done. And so we would say, let us see your will and your answers to these prayers. That's the prayer of faith. It is not striving to get from God what we want. It is bringing our lives and our concerns and prayers to God, lifting them into God's presence, and praying that we will see his good and faithful answers. Now, sometimes I've heard people say, you know, I prayed, and God didn't answer my prayer. And and I think what they mean by that, not to sound judgmental or self-righteous, I pray not, But I think what they're really saying is that God did not give me what I wanted when I prayed. Therefore, God did not answer my prayer. Well, how many of you have raised children? Is wait an answer? Is no an answer? I can remember, (laughs) my daughters will tell you this, I remember saying at times, when has my no ever become a yes? Never. But dad, can you? Well, no's an answer. Wait's an answer. We don't like those answers. Our kids didn't. I don't like to wait. I want a yes. Prayer of faith accepts those. And there are many times where God gives us what we have prayed for. Yes is an answer. No is an answer. Wait is an answer. Two of those three answers we don't, we struggle with. That's okay. In fact, in your prayer life, if if you're not, you know, things are not turning out the way that you prayed they would, you can bring that to God and say, I'm not, you know, I've prayed this, I'm feeling frustrated right now, I'm not seeing, help me to see your will and purpose through this time. That's okay. God won't ground you. He'll say, I'll show you. So the prayer of faith lifts up even passionately the prayers that we have, trusting that God will answer and always answers every prayer that we present to him. 
even if it's an answer we don't like. There are no loners in prayer. We put these verses into practice together as a congregation. And so we do have individual times of prayer. I hope we do. There are times that we pray passionately about certain concerns and individually about certain concerns. But there are also times where prayer is corporate. Remember, he's writing to a congregation. He's saying, share the, he says, call the elders, have them pray. Today, we, we, we might say, yeah, call the elders, talk to other people, call the prayer chain. Now, I know that there are some prayer requests that you want to be careful, and you know, you're, you're particular about the person with whom you're going to share that particular prayer request. That's okay. But there are no loners in times of prayer, in a prayer life. The God has called us together as a congregation as the redeemed people of God, and so together we pray. And when it's appropriate, we share those prayer requests with one another and lift them up. And so if, if our prayers were trying to go it alone, God hears those prayers, but he is also, he calls us to pray together as the people of God. And then there's this very interesting phrase at the end. It almost sounds as though James just kind of threw it in, but... He didn't. There's a reason why he wrote this. Therefore, in other words, remember what I've said before, if the word therefore is there, you want to see what it's there for. So, and it means based on what he's just said, therefore, as a result, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous one is powerful and effective confession. And did you notice that that phrase, uh, confession and praying for one another, is tied together in the same sentence? Why does he mention that? Well, there are times, you know, people being people, even the redeemed people, there's friction sometimes between individuals, personality differences and so on. You don't need me to tell you that. And at times, we need to go to each other and either forgive that person or ask for forgiveness. So if there is someone with whom you are struggling, you're less likely, I assume, my guess is, that we're less likely to share those prayer requests with people with whom we are struggling or a person that we need to ask forgiveness from or with a person that we need to forgive. And so we kind of cut people off. James says, confess those things to each other. Ask for forgiveness. Give forgiveness. Pray together. And that's what I believe that that James is saying there. And that's a necessary step in praying together. And he concludes, in all of those things, believing in the power of prayer, being people who believe that God hears all prayer, not going alone, but praying together as a congregation for one another when it's appropriate, and then asking for and giving forgiveness as we pray together as the people of God. Why? Because that prayer The prayer of the redeemed is powerful and effective because God is good. Amen.
Oh, wait. Stand back up. If you're able. <laughs> and let us declare what we believe through the Apostles' Creed. Please be seated. As we come to our time of uh, sharing uh, prayers and concerns, uh, we have uh, answering uh, the veterans would like us to know. Enjoying this uh, week with family in Orange Beach. See them safely home. Be with them. Continue your good work within their lives. We pray for Kyle. Addiction is such a deep struggle in one's life. We pray for patience for his family. We pray for your spirit of grace to lead him through this time. We pray that you would strengthen him for this struggle through rehab. We pray for Ruthie. We pray that you would use the talents of her physicians, uh, technicians, all who care for her, that all these individuals and these treatments together would be a means of your healing grace in her life. Uh, we pray, uh, we give you thanks for the progress that we've seen in Dan's life and pray that you continue to use the treatments in this positive way 
as a means of your healing grace in his life. See Anita safely here. Uh, be with her on the uh, bicycle trip. And uh, may this, uh, all of these things together, the answers to your prayer, may we have open eyes and ears and hearts to see your answers. We rejoice that we can gather together, that we can begin singing again and enjoying music. And we pray for your continued wisdom as we move forward into reopening. Indeed, the church is not a building. It is the gathering of the redeemed. And so we pray for your continued uh, grace and strength and wisdom as we move forward. And we have stepped into this sanctuary, many with great joys, others with deep worries. And we pray that you would hear us now as we lift these joys and worries silently and individually to you. Heavenly Father, we rejoice that you hear all prayers, spoken and unspoken, sometimes without words. You know our hearts. And so we thank you for hearing these prayers. And again, we ask for open eyes and hearts to see your answers. And hear us as together as your people, we pray the prayer that uh, your Son and our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. One of the things that will be happening uh, in our near future, I hope, is uh, we will be able to pass the plates. But as you know, we're not able, we're still holding off on that. Uh, the, the plate is, the offering plate is right outside the door there to the narthex. Thank you for your support. And as always, you may get tired of hearing me say this, but we're not supporting an institution or a church building, but we are supporting the kingdom of God and mission and outreach as we make our way through this time of uh, transition into the bright future that God has for this congregation. So thank you for your faithfulness and your commitment. And uh, let us pray together the prayer of dedication. Gracious and holy God, accept what we offer this morning, our checks and cash, our faltering steps, our brokenness, our leftovers, our lives. Bless and transform all that we offer and all that we hold back, that new life may be ours, to celebrate and share in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the grace and mercy and peace from God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, fill your lives now and forevermore through Jesus Christ, our risen and living Lord. Amen.